which way forward for your life tomorrow? Why are you in school today? What are you preparing yourself for tomorrow? And that is why I give stories to young people at a very early age. I remember going to a nursery school and giving this story of boy boy the bully. This bully was very stubborn and was very proud and was very greedy. He was bigger than all the children in the class and would seize their lunch, would take control of the toys and would not allow the children to be free. So the teacher wanted to teach boy boy the bully what life is all about. Therefore, he allowed boy boy to come to the classroom and he left all the food, all the toys, everything that was in the classroom to boy boy the bully alone. And then all the children left the classroom and left him alone. He ate the food, but could not take all of it in his stomach. Because he ate so much that his stomach started to pain him. But he was alone in the classroom. He played with the toys, but the toys were too much. He took everything, but eventually he was tired of playing. He sat down and looked around and discovered that there was nobody. And he became lonely. His stomach was aching and he wanted somebody to help him and nobody was there. And therefore, he started to cry. And because he realized that only the teacher could rescue him, he shouted until the teacher came. The teacher asked him, why are you crying? You have all the toys. You have all the food. You have everything to yourself. Why are you crying? He said, well, my stomach is aching because I ate too much food. I am lonely, so I'm tired of the toy. I really miss the other children. I want you to call them so that I can talk to them, I can play with them. He was tired of loneliness. And that's what you should discover in life. That you are important. And that you should share and care before you can have happiness in life. You should discover what has happened to these children who were acting. You have seen what has happened to their life. One of them felt that he was very rich. Yes, you can have all the wealth in the world, but you can only live in one house at any given time. No matter how big the house, you can live only in one room at any given time. No matter how big the room, you can only sleep on one bed at any given time. No matter how big the bed, you can only sleep on a small size of your body and lie on that at any given time. No matter how many clothes you have, you can only put on one pair at any given time. No matter how many shoes, pairs of shoes you have, you can only put on one pair at any given time. No matter how much you food you have, even if you kill a bull today, you can only eat a small piece and you are satisfied. If you eat more than that, you will suffer. So the human being should not be greedy. You can only consume what you can consume. The rest you will live and die. That is why your ambition should be to be a human being. And to be a human being, you must have knowledge. Your mind must be tempered with knowledge. That is what makes you a human being. Your heart must be tempered with truth. The 
Because the person who has truth in his heart will not exploit and destroy another human being. That person must love another human being. And the person you love, you will not want to destroy. A person you love, you will not want to oppress. The person you love, you will not want to exploit. The person you love, you will want to care for. You will want to share with. That is the lesson the children taught us here. It must be borne in mind that to be a human being, your conscience must be tempered with justice. You will not want to be unfair to other people. You will not want to see other people suffering. You will want to see other people living in dignity and in liberty. To be a human being, you must have willpower. You must be able to resist what destroys you. You know that at the age of 12 and 13, 14, if you are a girl and you have a child, how will you take care of that child? When that child cries at the middle of the night because of illness, who will wake up to take care of that child? You, at the age of 14, 15, you are not prepared to take care of that child. How will you feed that child? So it means that you are not ready yet for that child. And if you are a human being, you must prepare for parenthood. You must be ready for that child to be in your arm. And that is why, as a girl, at this age, you must prepare for your education. You must have the type of values which will enable you to resist any temptation that will lead you so that you end up having a child prematurely. Because that is what leads to people eventually throwing that child in the dustbin. Throwing that child in the, in the pit. Digging a hole and burying the child. And can you imagine being a parent who abandoned that child? You will grow up to be 40, 50, 60. Can you imagine remembering what you have done? Mothering a human being because you were not prepared for that child. That is why the teachers, that is why the parents are telling you to wait for the moment when you are fully prepared to receive that child, to be able to take care of that child, to prepare that child for the future. That is what a human being is all about. Look at the young person who feels that he is enjoying himself. At the age of 12, 13, you take drugs. And you should bear in mind that the human being should have a mind that is alive. But you are taking things that will make you see one human being as two. One head as two. Then it means that your brain is changing. It was no longer being up to be the brain of a human being because the brain of a human being is the brain of a genius it's a brain that concentrates it's a brain that understands it's a brain that is the brain of a thinker it's a brain that should be able to lead you to be an inventor it should lead you to be a builder and we cannot have good roads we cannot have good hospitals we cannot have good schools we cannot have any better society without being thinkers, without being inventors, without being builders of a civilization. So my conclusion is that you, the young people of the Gambia, you must so, have strong willpower. When you relate to other children, don't allow anybody to mislead you. You must own your mind. You must own yourself. You must do the things and say the things that will lead you to be the type of human being who can build a society, who can create a society based on liberty, dignity, and prosperity. So, teachers, parents, we must congratulate you for carrying out your duties. We must show appreciation to you because no human being can pay a teacher. No human being can pay a teacher. The only payment that teachers and parents have is appreciation.
So, teachers, students, parents, you are together in this work of building a civilization that we call the Gambia. You have a good start. We have seen it with our own eyes. We have seen what you have put in these children. They are building up to be new human beings. They have a future. They must be helped to plan for that future. They must have a target for their lives. Because you must know where you are going before you can prepare to get there. You have prepared them to be at this stage. They must move further to be at a higher stage. And together, we will work to guide them towards that greater destiny. Thank you very much.